in this video, I want to take a look at linear transformations in two dimensions. So we can easily define a transformation in two dimensions by describing how a general point with position vector x, y is transformed. And this new point is what we call the image. So what I'm going to do here to begin with is define two transformations. So we have t here. That takes a general point with position vector x, y. We have x, y. And it maps this here to x plus 1 and y minus 1. That's my first transformation there for t. And then let's say we have another transformation here for w. So again, w takes a general point with position vector x, y. And it maps this here to say x plus 3y. and x minus y. Okay, so x minus y there. So that's my um, beginning here, so my two transformations. So now what I want to do here is find the image of say 3, 4, okay, under these two transformations. So find the image of say the point 3, 4. Okay. So we have a general point here with position vector x, y. So if I've got this point here, 3, 4, then x would be 3 to begin with and y would be 4. Okay. So now we apply the transformation here. So under t. So under t here, we take the point x, y. So that would be the point 3, 4. And now it maps to x plus 1 and y minus 1. So that would be 3 plus 1 and 4 minus 1. Okay, so in other words, we're just substituting in x and y. Okay, so under t then, we take the point 3, 4. <clears throat> and this maps here then, 2, 3, plus 1. That would then be um, y here, which is 4, so 4 minus 1. Okay, and what we get here then is 4 and 3. Okay, so we get 4, 3 there. So therefore the image under T so the image under T that would be 4 3 there. So my x coordinate is 4, my y coordinate is 3. Okay. So that's my first transformation there. Now hopefully that should seem quite straightforward. Nothing too challenging, I don't think, to begin with. So now let's take a look here under w so now applying the transformation here of w so under w again we take our general point here um oh, sorry our, we had our general point we now have this particular point here 3 4 so we take the point 3 4 and this maps then so it's x plus 3y so that's going to be 3 here plus 3 lots of 4 And then what we've got here is x minus y, so that's going to be 3 minus 4. Okay, like so. So now if we evaluate this here, I've got 3 plus 3 lots of 4, so that's 12, plus the 3, that gives me 15. I get 15 there. And then 3 minus 4 gives me minus 1. Okay. We get 15 minus 1, so therefore the image here under W Let's just write this down as well. So the image under W is 15 minus 1. So again, my x coordinate here is 15. My y coordinate is minus 1. So what we need to be careful of here now is what we actually define as a linear transformation. So we have these two transformations here. And just take a moment now and see if you can identify which one of these two transformations is the linear transformation. And hopefully what you say here is that W is the linear transformation. So W is defined as a linear transformation in this case because the transformation only involves linear terms in X and Y. So T here is not a linear transformation. Okay, so just make a note of this here. W 
is linear transformation. Okay, that room a little bit. So T here is not a linear transformation because it's X plus one, the plus one here, and then we have the Y minus one, okay? So because W is only in terms of X and Y here, um, this is what's noted here as a linear transformation, okay? Now we have a couple of key concepts here then for linear transformations. So let's take a look now at the two key properties here for linear transformations in two dimensions. So my first property here is that linear transformations always map the origin onto itself. And hopefully it should seem quite obvious and intuitive. So obviously it doesn't matter what linear combination we have in terms of X and Y, the point zero, zero will map back to itself again. Okay, that's my first property there for linear transformations in two dimensions. So what else do we have here? Well, we say any linear transformation can be represented by a matrix. And this is a key property here, okay? So how do we define this? Well, let's say we have a linear transformation T. So let's say we have a linear transformation T here. Linear transformation. So we have T that takes a general point with position vector X, Y. And this maps to AX plus BY. Then we have CX plus DY. Okay. That's my linear transformation there for T. So we can now represent this here as a two by two matrix. So this can be represented then as a two by two matrix here. If I define this matrix here as M, and this is equal then to A, B, C, D. Okay. So just notice then for each row, this would be the coefficients of X and Y. And again, here in the bottom row, X, or sorry, the coefficient of X and the coefficient of Y. Okay, so I get A, B, C, D there, my two by two matrix, and that represents this linear transformation here for T. Okay, and we can see why that works. So if I take this um, transformation here as a matrix, I've got A, B, C, D. I've got A, B, C, D. I take my general point again, x, y, and under matrix multiplication here, what I'm going to get then is ax plus by, and I get cx plus dy, okay? And there we have it. So you can see again why that works there. So that's everything that we need there then for linear transformations in two dimensions. So now let's just take a look here at a couple of practice questions for linear transformations in two dimensions. Starting off here then with question one, we're asked to find the matrix representation for the following linear transformations. So before we actually define the matrix representation here for part A and part B, I'm just going to quickly recap how we find the matrix representation for a given linear transformation. So let's take a general point with position vector x, y, like so. And let's say this here maps to ax plus by. So ax plus BY and CX plus DY. Okay, like so. Then the matrix representation here for this given transformation, let's define that as M, that would be equal then. So all we do here is we take the coefficients of X and Y along the top row, and we do the same for the bottom row. So my two by two matrix here for M, that would be A, B, C, D like so, okay? So all we need to do now is apply this here, this property to part A and part B. So for part A then, we have the linear transformation of S. So we have X, Y, and this maps here, we have X minus Y and minus Y. So, Using this property here then, we can say that S is represented by a two by two matrix. So S is represented by, then we have our two by two matrix here. 
So for the elements here of our two by two matrix, we can identify that using the given linear transformation. So again, taking the coefficients here of X and Y along the top row and the bottom row here, we can see then we're going to get one minus one. So we've got one X and minus one Y. We get one minus one. And then along the bottom row here, we have zero X's. So that's going to be zero. We've got minus Y, so that's going to be minus one there. Okay. And there we have it. So we can see the solution then to part A. So let me just kind of split this off a little bit here. So now for part B underneath here, we have the linear transformation of T. So T, for our general point, X, Y. What does this map to here? Well, this maps to X and 3X plus 4Y. We've got X and 3X plus 4Y. Okay, so how do we represent the matrix representation here for T? Well, T is represented So T is represented by, and again, we're going to get a two by two matrix here. And again, just identifying the coefficients here of X and Y along the top row and the bottom row. So along the top row, we've got one X and zero Y, so it's going to be one zero. And then along the bottom row here, we've got three X. So that's going to be um, three in the bottom left corner. And then in the bottom right, we've got four here. So my coefficients of X and Y along the bottom row are three and four. We get three and four here in our matrix. And there we have it. So that's the solution to A, the solution to B, and that gives the solution there to question one. Moving on to the last question here, then question two, where we have the square M, which has vertices at one, zero, one, one, two, zero, and two, one. So for this question here, we have to find the vertices of the image of M under the transformations represented by the following matrices. So let's start then with part A. And in part A, we have the matrix here of one, two, two, one. Okay. So this two by two matrix here represents a linear transformation. So it's in terms of X and Y only. Now we don't actually have to define the linear transformation here, but I'm going to do it for this question just so you can clearly see what we're working with. Okay, so let's take a general point here with position vector x, y. We'll have x, y here. And this maps then. And this linear transformation here is defined using this matrix now. So if we have 1, 2 along the top row, that's 1x and 2y. So that's going to be x plus 2y. And then along the bottom row here, we have two one, so that means two x's and one y. So we get two x plus y there. Okay. So that's the actual linear transformation here for this matrix. So what we're doing here is we're taking each point, so each vertex of this square M, and we're applying it under this linear transformation here. Now, obviously, to do each one um, by hand, it's not going to take you know a massive amount of time, but it is quite tedious. What we'd like is a quicker way of doing this. And we can do this using multiplication. Okay. So if I define my matrix here that we use for our linear transformation, so we have one, two, two, one. What we're doing now is I'm going to set up a new matrix here, and that's going to be for the points here of my square, or the vertices, I should say. So for this point here, one zero, that would be one and the zero underneath. For one one, again, just following the same idea here, two zero. And then finally, two, one. We get something that looks like this. Okay. And now we can easily find this product here just using our calculator. If you don't have a calculator that can do this uh, multiplication here, then you would have to do it by hand. Um, but I would recommend just getting a calculator that can find this product here, um, just saving you a bit of extra time. So if you do this correctly here on your calculator, what you should get then? You should get one, two, three, three, two, four. And then finally, four or five. Okay. So this matrix here now represents the image of M under this transformation here in part A. So let me just write this underneath. So therefore the image of M so the image of M here is given as 
what I'll do now is I'm just going to write down each point. So each point here is given as a, as a column basically in this matrix here. So I've got the point 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, and 4, 5. So I'm just write down each point here underneath. We have 1, 2. We have 3, 3. We have 2, 4. And then finally, we have 4, 5 there. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the image of N there under this given transformation here in part A. So that's part A done. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear the screen just so we can have um, a bit of extra room for part B. So for part B then, again, it's going to look pretty similar here. We just have a different transformation now. So I've got 1, 0, 0, minus 1. And this is still a linear transformation. It might not quite look like it, but it is. So let me just write down the matrix to begin with. So we've got 1, 0, 0, minus 1. So here, again, we don't have to actually define the linear transformation. But if I just do it here, just so you can see what we're working with. Again, if we take a general point here, the position vector x, y. And in this case here, this would map then. So using the top row here, we've got 1x and 0y. So that's just going to simply be x. So we get x there. And then for the bottom row here, we've got zero X's and we've got minus one Y. So that'll be minus Y then. Okay, like so. And there we have it. So that's my linear transformation here then for this given matrix here in part B. So again, we're just taking each point here or the vertices of this square and we're applying those under this linear transformation here. And again, we don't want to do this by hand. We're going to use the product then of these matrices. So we take the transformation here we have 1, 0, 0, minus 1. And we multiply this here by um, my points here. So again, that would be 1, 0. So 1, 0 underneath. 1, 1. 2, 0. And then finally 2, 1. So again, we just find this product here using our calculator. And if you do this correctly, what you should get then is 1, 0. 1, minus 1, 2, 0, and then finally 2, minus 1. Okay, and then therefore we can say that the vertices of the image of M, I should say, so the vertices of the image of M, Are defined as or are given as so what we've got here is one zero so that's this point here just remember the points here are given as each column within this matrix so i've then got one minus one so one minus one there we have two zero and then finally two minus one okay like so and there we have it. So that's the solution to B there. And that gives the solution to the very last question, question two. And that actually brings the end of this video on linear transformations in two dimensions.